Hi, this is Frank Kelly with Math Made Almost Bearable again. And I'm going to talk about something that some of you may have had in a course in statistics and that you thought was very odd. In statistics, there's a distinction often made between taking a small sample and taking a large sample. So the question arises, how big a sample is it in order to call it a large sample? And the answer that's often given is 30. If you have at least 30 scores in your sample, then you can use what are called large sample techniques. But if you have less than 30 or fewer than 30, you ought to use small sample techniques. Now, why is this? Well, if you've been watching these diatribes, you, you, may, have remember, you may remember that I said that for repeated large samples, that's an E, the sample average will follow the bell-shaped curve. Well, I ought to insert a word in there. Well, I'd say I put it in. Large is what I'm going to get at. For repeated large samples. Well, what's large? Well, let's ask ourselves what happens if the samples aren't large. And now we have to talk about some founders of statistics. And the, the, the godfather of statistics is Sir Ronald Fisher. He's the Newton of statistics. He invented what we call modern statistics, oh, in the, 19, in the period from 1910 to 1930, I guess, and continued on to be this guru for years after that. Well, what happens when you have a small sample? Suppose you take repeated small samples. Suppose you take repeated small samples. Um, and you, you take x bar, your sample mean, over and over and over. Then, under some assumptions that I won't go into, you need a couple of technical assumptions, x bar will follow a different curve from the bell curve. And this curve, which for reasons that are somewhat obscure, looks kind of like a normal curve, but it's kind of fatter. If you went out here where we expect the 34%, you'd get less. Less than the 0.34 that I talked about in a previous lecture. So more of the probabilities out in the tails. Okay. This curve is called the T curve. And that's an interesting story in itself, but I don't have time to tell it in this particular lecture. And there's a different T curve for every sample size. So if you took samples of size 10, you picked out 10 scores and averaged them, you picked out 10 more scores and averaged them, 10, 10, 10, and so on, graphed the averages, it would follow a certain T curve. If you picked out 15 again and again and again, it would be a different curve. So what you need is, you need a table of probabilities for each T curve. So you need a T curve with samples of size, well, I don't think anybody would be idiotic enough to base anything on a sample of size 2, but you know, sample of size 8, sample of size 9, sample of size 10, and so on. And this is a lot of work. Well, it's not so much work now because we got computers, but Fisher was making these T tables back in the 20s. And he was doing a lot of this by hand, and it's hard. So Fisher did 
T curves, T curves, up to N sample size equals 30. L29 probably. But he, he made these curves, one after the other, and it's laborious, it's hard work. And then he got tired. He had other things to do. He was a serious person. So he quit. So the disciples came to Fisher and they said, but master, what should we do if the sample size is bigger than 30, but not much bigger than 30? And Fisher, who just didn't want to be bothered, said, oh, use, use the bell curve for n bigger than 30. Don't bother me. Now look, now we could have t curves spit out by a computer one after another up to sample sizes of a couple of hundred. But why do we continue to use 30? Because Fisher said so. A lot of things in statistics are because Fisher said so. When we talked about that rejecting hypotheses, and I kind of mentioned that the borderline number of improbability was about 5%. Why is that? Because Fisher said so. Well, sometimes worshiping the God of your subject is a good idea. Fisher was a good man, but you ought to remember all it was was because Fisher said so, not because it makes any sense. And that's how come 30 or more is considered a large sample. See you next time on Math Made Almost Bearable.